And can you trust that you won't blow away in the wind? So there is a fairly decent staircase, albeit not really safe for general pedestrian use. And then, again, rightfully so, uh, the council don't want people walking over this because it's not, it's not, uh, it's not secure land. You know, people could fall over and sue the council. So look at that. There is the canal. I'm gonna step into the canal. There's even a football down there, look. Now I'm in and actually under the Union Canal. Look at this. That's the canal banks. That's the other canal bank. Now there aren't many times in your life you'll be able to say you're underneath a canal. This is a collapsed canal bank. Whoops, let me turn. And I am now underneath the Union Canal. It's been drained and emptied. They're fixing the, uh, the banks here on the side. That isn't gonna happen very often in your life, is it? And we go back up. So thank you to John from Chasing Snails. And uh, you've saved us having to walk into the town. Wow, that's quite some stairs, Michelle. <laughs> My legs. And we're back on the canal bank. Now, Michelle just pointed out that John said also he had to avoid a little bit the workers that were here and getting told off by them. But it is actually a bank holiday today, so nobody's working. And subsequently, we're not getting bothered at all. We could have stayed in that low road, Michelle. Yes. And just up here, look, is the, uh, we're back with the level canal. Quite interesting, the way they've drained it out. Now they've kindly locked the gate to stop people getting through. Which I think is a bit mean spirited. Right, so is this where he said go through? Come in this way. There's a car parked up here. Fella in a car. I think so. So, what we need to do is work our way around. Because these guys, these construction guys, have been arseholes actually. Because they needn't have closed this off. Give me a hand. So this is where people have decided that they don't want the council to actually interfere with their lives. And they just want to get on with life. They're coming around this fence. Good for them. Because there was nothing there. On that walkway, there was nothing there that I haven't seen tenfold worse on the walk from John O'Groats down and they blocked it and locked a gate across it deliberately to stop people walking along that path, which I, I just think it's what's wrong with the world. It's what's wrong with the world. You take your own risks in life. You decide what paths you want to go on and what paths you don't. And as soon as you start letting the government tell you where you can and cannot go, then you might as well stop living. But I think we can get back on to the canal towpath, maybe up through here. Yep, I reckon so. Looks to me this is a well-worn path and I can see the, the back end of the canal route here. Ah, 
And here's the churchyard. Very odd that the litter bin's outside of the, the edge. These are virtually desecrated graveyards, aren't they? Yeah. So here too, the actual wall of this churchyard has completely collapsed. So we are cutting through. There was a car up there just now, Michelle. Yeah, there was, it's gone. Is that the same guy? Yeah, probably. I wonder if that was the guy who was watching us through the fence just now. Probably came round to have a look. Thank you to the graveyard for giving us a, a little cut through access. And uh, the boys are working, digging a grave. That was quite the diversion, wasn't it? Yeah, just a little winter. <laughs> a bit of mountaineering in the middle of it. Now, apparently, Mackenzie with an MAC, apparently, and maybe you can tell me a little bit about the history, um, MAC are Highlander names. Uh, in the Highlands, they don't tend to use the MC, the muck. Now that looks like our canal path there. And I'm guessing then that the other side of our canal path is over here somewhere. Tove path closed. And here, we're back on back on the towpath. Look, you're gonna break the odd simple rule to be able to access roads that are 1,200 miles long. So any knowledge you can get from other travelers is gonna greatly help reduce uh, the distance you have to walk. So again, I've got to thank, uh, oh look, there's nice, on that side, picnic oh, yeah. benches and everything. So, uh, yeah, I've got to thank John again. Take care, mate. And I know you're only uh, possibly a week or so from the end of your uh, Land's End to John O'Groats walk. Whew. We still got a long way to go. Michelle's just walked under it, but look, that tree there is not actually alive. It's just leaning and borrowing its weight against that tree. So that's ready to, uh, to drop. They're obviously not maintaining this canal path at all. And even though we're past the, the landslide, it still seems the canal itself is not in use. And the funny thing is all the little cafes and stops and picnic areas are on the opposite side of the canal to the towpath. It's very strange. Um, I'm not sure why there's nothing on this side where the, where the people walk. Very odd. The ducks over there. This is like the enchanted wood. Anyone get the reference? She's powering ahead of me and then having a rest. Well, you keep having to film. <laughs> I know, I gotta keep filming. I don't get the rests unless you classify stopping to film as a rest. I think we're going across a pretty little aqueduct here, a little bridge of water. The canals are amazing. Uh, every canal in the UK is just beautiful and amazing. Look at this cobbled stone way here and I bet you this is one of another one of those great architectural feats where a whole river of water goes over a road or actually Even so I think it's going arches. going over a river has this got 12 arches 12 arches wow um, I think it was 247 metres long. How beautiful. 
and we can't we can't see it so we're meeting a couple here on bicycles so we'll try and get out of their way good day this is amazing isn't it Oh, we're Aussies. Aussies, they Yeah. What part of Aussie are you? Uh, from Melbourne. Melbourne, no, I'll show you from the other part. Oh, which part? Perth. Perth, or oh, way the other part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is, um, do you know, what's the name of this? Do you know the name Even, of Even uh, Bridge, Even Bridge. Avon Bridge. So is that the, is that at Avon River down Avon there? Avon River, yeah, yeah. Is that the Avon that goes all the way down south then? No, it's well, a different it's a completely different river. Completely different river. Yeah. Yeah. But this is amazing. I love yeah. these, the engineering of this yeah. sort of 200 bridge. Years, it's been, it's been, it's been, it's been, 200 years, isn't it? 200 years. Yeah. Yeah. 200 years ago when they were building stuff like this. It's yeah. phenomenal, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I know, look at the drop. <laughs> oh, anyway, we get past you. Aye, okay. uh, thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Enjoy your walk. Thank, thank you. you. 200 years they built this. I tell you, they, they, they'd struggle to build this stuff in this sort of quality today. And yet, what are we talking? 1820? I'll, I'll see if I can get some pictures because I won't be able to get them myself, I don't think, of the bridge and the arches. This is the beauty. People were saying to us, um, you know, you must go in and see the Kelpies. And I missed, I would have liked to see the Kelpies, but it was a long way off our route. You know, many, oh, the acoustic change. Many hours of walking to get up there to see it. And places like this, this aqueduct is barely even mentioned. And yet I'm so pleased to have crossed it. The tunnel that we did yesterday, it, it's, it's heaps more. It's heaps more exciting. Oh, are you finding that a bit high? No, no, that's all right. It's a bit, the cobbles are quite hard to walk on. The cobbles are quite tough, actually. They're, they're, the grout in the cobbles um, has completely washed away. Again, it's probably just a sign of 200 years ago, they would have kept this absolutely pristine. And of course, 2020, they can't be bothered to keep the grout between the, the cobbles. But, what I'm saying is, if somebody had said, you can cross this bridge, or you can go and see the Kelpies, or go through that tunnel yesterday, or go and see the Kelpies, I'd, I'd pick this every time, because I just think this is, this is magnificent. And I know the, I don't even know what the Kelpies are, to be honest, I hadn't heard of them before I got to Scotland. And I've never heard of this bridge either but I'm loving it. And look at the pond weed down there. I'm hoping it just crooks around the corner here and we get a glance of the 12 arches. I'm just amazed that 1820 or 200 years ago anyway, from what I understand, when you'd been grateful to have a pair of wooden clogs on your feet, that they were able to build this sort of thing. Um, oh, just about see them. Just about see the arches. Stone, great big chunks of stone. Amazing, absolutely brilliant. So we're still on the John Muir Way. Um, you can actually go down these steps to it as well but our map is saying carry on on this is the national cycle network 754 so we're going to carry on um, on the cycle network road for the time being so we've just come off the canal this is where planning such a walk becomes troublesome because now we've got to walk a little bit of this main road Again. You wouldn't want her to move over, would you? This, she's got a clear 300 meters ahead of her and she didn't want to move off of her side of the road, even though it's broken dotted line and she's entitled to. Please, when you're, when you're driving and you have clear sign of, 
clear line of sight ahead of your car and you see people walking, give them the respect of moving over further than you think you need to. The more space between uh, a walker and a car, as long as you're completely open, because the road is here, the more space between a walker and a car, the safer you are from getting yourself in trouble by killing somebody, and the more comfortable it is for the, for the walker. Please just do it. Don't try and be clever and stay in close because you don't like walkers. Grow up. Another stretch of road with no hard shoulder. And it would be that 30 cars come along at once. Thank you. you know, nothing, no real reason at all or rhyme or reason why that big long stretch of cars had to come along at the same time as that tractor. So these are the bits of roads that I don't really like. They are dangerous. They are uh, without really, they're not safe, they're not safe roads. And then you've got to kind of watch your, pick your spots. We've been on in this situation before and things can get really gnarly if the road suddenly gets excessively busy and this tiny little hard shoulder vanishes from us. I don't like these walks. Uh, and here <laughs> is our road. Well, it's a bit more rugged. <laughs> yeah. I'm just wondering actually if uh, this little pathway just up from that road, maybe you can reference it. Which towns are we between, Michelle? Just off the Union Canal. Just before Linlithgow. Just before Linlithgow, where they might have been able to come up that route yeah. rather than come up the road. I, I suspect you probably could. I would rather be on this though than on that road. So it was only about 600 meters, maybe five or 600 meters on that uh, nasty stretch of road. And now we're on this pathway which looks like an old farm track. So we cut the hill, we're having a little stop. Now, this road looks a little bit precarious going down this way, but look what happens when governments make their tips cost too much, you know? It, I, I really hate it that people have done this. This is fly tipping at its worst. Somebody has just come up here, driven their car up and dumped a lawnmower, kids toys, strollers. It's, it's disgusting, but it's not entirely their fault. It is because they're ignorant enough to do it. But it's also down to the government to start providing places for people to get rid of their rubbish so they don't have to fly tip, please. Stop charging for getting rid of hard rubbish. Let people get rid of their rubbish. I know it's an expensive thing for government to do, but the alternative is this happens all over the world and I'd rather pay a little extra in taxes. Actually, I'd rather not because I'd rather them spend a little bit more, less money on their Christmas hampers and, and get everybody yeah, access to proper tipping places. And that barbed wire. Step up onto this if you can. This is where it's gone. All a bit tricky now. Where are hiking sticks? So you're gonna come across here onto this stone, okay? okay. On the other hand. So, uh, this whole central area here is bog, deep bog. And, uh, the gate that comes over just lands you in this sort of cow pat manure pile. So we're gonna have to work our way over um, this old ancient wall here. 
and then um, we're going to climb Because I think once we get onto that little tuft over there, I think the ground dries out a bit as we go uphill. Oh, I do hope so. I'm gonna have to put the camera away, ladies yes. and gentlemen, because the camera, you might get some funny things as we fall in, but I need the hand to balance. <laughs> now, we only got these six two days ago, and we were just saying a Please. moment ago that they were pretty pointless. But I think getting across this without them would have been oh, I just struggled. a lot harder. So let's hope this ground here feels a bit firmer. I'm gonna watch also because there's the odd piece of um, bramble to snag you. I think, and I'll just keep my foot up in the air here a moment. I think that that's gonna be firm and this is gonna be firm, so. If we can get around here. So we've crossed that now, Michelle. This is pretty firm over here. It's <laughs> firm as, as that, but I think this, this uh, mud is pretty walkable. All right. Hit the brown ball, but that's all right. Find your jacket. Right. So, ow, ow, fingers. Step forward a little onto this stuff. Okay. Right, we have to hope this path gets better, otherwise we'll be five hard, days. Maybe. Maybe. Right. We don't want to be days and days on this stretch, do we? You can see how deep the cows, when it was wet, just how deep the cows' legs have dropped into the mud at one point. So in the winter time, this path would be inaccessible. And this is a right, this is a walkway. This feels ridiculous. This feels not good. Not a good walkway. You doing all right, Michelle? Yeah, I'm behind you, but I'm doing all right. She's fine. I'm just going a little ahead so I can kind of check if there's any real pitfalls. Okay, onto a bit of grass. <sighs> Does it get better? Does, yeah. <laughs> Does get better. Where the path is there. I think that's one of the trickier bits. At this rate, we're doing about uh, one mile every five hours. <laughs> <laughs> Me struggling. I know, but that's because I've just struggled it. I'm not sure. This is, we're just in the middle of nowhere. And the, the pathway, it's non existent. Oh, this sucks big time. That was a nightmare, Michelle. <laughs> Good job we got these sticks, I think. I tell you. We only got these two days ago, and I think this section, we wouldn't have been able to do it without the sticks. Because I, have been able to do for sure. I don't think I would, Michelle, because I wouldn't have known where to stand. I mean, so much of that land was bog. Top of the hill. <laughs> Every little stream that you come across is bog. Bog either side of it. But look where we are. Um, I'm hoping, because there's a, a minor, well, I wouldn't really call it a, <laughs> a path, but there's some sort of minor um, roadway up here um, that things are gonna get a little easier. And maybe this house at one time had a road access to it. The cows have really messed up. This would have probably been the original driveway into this uh, homestead here. And uh, obviously nobody lives here nor has done for a long time. Follow this way for one kilometer. Follow this way for one, that's my GPS telling me follow this for a kilometer. What, walking? 
hopefully it's not like this for a kilometer. Yeah, It'll be another day and a half on it if it is. Um, just trying to pick out the bits of mud that you're not going to sink, but we're probably lucky that it's had a, a few dry days because otherwise you'd need Wellington boots in this sort of uh, environment. This is not as easy as anyone might think. <laughs> See, it's all not uh, roses. Back there was a really bad bit of bog. We did all right though. So it's taken us close to a, an hour to come a kilometer. But I think we've got to follow this little, what would you, should we call it a path? Want of another thing. How you doing, Michelle? Doing all right? So you meet people on the bridleways and the footpaths around the towns and you say you're walking from John O'Groats to Land's End and they'll go, oh, how nice. Oh, it's such a lovely day. And off they go. But you never meet anyone out here. <laughs> never. There's no one coming along here saying, what a lovely walk. <sighs> this is what the real walk is like had lots of this a lot more of this than any of the good stuff and we're boggy again boggy with chance of rain it's a bit soft here Michelle be careful okay. underfoot there's a lot of deer uh, footprints you can see quite a lot but it's also very rough you can see there, there's a deer, big buck I would say, it's been along here. Now it's getting pretty boggy again, and we've got to be careful where we pick our route. I'm going to put you down, I think we're going to go close to the fence line, maybe. It's pretty soft. Oh, not so sure, Michelle. So it's cleared a little bit. We've come out of the bog land up there. Oh, I don't know, I wish, I wish. I've got some sort of waypoints that people have made, you know, go to Livingston, which is where we're going now. Um, but uh, I wish there was a more definitive guide that made sure we didn't end up on these sort of routes. You know, I know I expect we have to do quite a bit of this on the walk, but um, it would be very nice to know that we were doing it the right way. I think through here, Michelle, and then down to the right here. I don't think so. Just take that one off. That there. So at the advice of a, another hiker, we went through, took a shortcut through a farm, got told off by the farmer. He was all right, actually. He didn't mind when he learnt our backstory but he doesn't want people going through the farm. And now they've sent us into this, uh, it's a public park. Um, but when we, were, when we walked into it, there were three directions. So we really haven't got a clue. Um, our map said go left, but it seems counterintuitive. So we're actually going to go the way the compass tells us to go and hope that we can join up the dots. So this is where it's going to get interesting because this is the first time that we are going to use my soya squeeze water filtration. There is a nice little running stream here. 
Okay, we didn't film it because I'll film it another time because basically I got dunked in the water. I got my feet all wet. What an amazing uh, mountain bike route this would be, or is. I've seen a bike go through just a moment ago. Look at this bridge they've made here. Ooh, cambers right over like that, see? That looks like a nicer road over there, yeah. doesn't it? Where the people are walking, I think we, we always pick the wrong road. So yeah, look, they've even created some jumps here for bikes. It's really cool. It doesn't allow for speed though, does it? No. <laughs> Unless you're on a bike. Better on the other path. Yeah. Puts the other side of the river. Where all the families are walking. <laughs> and they're pushing the strollers. <laughs> pushing strollers and walking along. Michelle and I taking the shortcut for it through, which is barely a shortcut. Mm. Probably knocked off about 10 meters. All right. A bit of fun, isn't it? Mm. That's what we should be on, Michelle. <laughs> That'll be easier, wouldn't it? Watch the city, watch the last of the sun vanish over the hill.